and I'm Welcome back, Source Nation. You're listening live to Renaissance Relationship Therapy with Life Purpose Coach Tim T. Good evening, Source Nation, Source Nation. I am your host, Tim T. Sahura, and I want to welcome you to Renaissance Relationship Therapy, the show that gives you the relationship view you never knew, and it's a view that has the power to change literally everything. So um, we're getting ready to introduce tonight's special guest, Timna Augustine, and um, we're going to be having a conversation about the hard lessons on love that you won't listen to. And like we said at the top of the show, um, unlike other mistakes in our lives, the mistakes committed in love hurt way more because they hit us closer to our hearts. It's so easy to get bogged down in the rose-colored concept of love that we see in the movies and magazines. Yet breakups and divorce rates are at all-time highs. The perfect lovebirds whose marriage you saw on Facebook last year have broken up already. What happened? The fact? Life just caught up with them. Things changed, and the truth of love hit hard. Now we can read a thousand books, be in tens of relationships, but there are some things about love we are only ever going to learn the hard way, especially if we keep avoiding the tough truths. And if we keep on doing that, then the lessons from love only get harder. Now, our guest, Timna, she's a veteran when it comes to hitting the airwaves and giving advice on and off it. She offers content, uh, sorry, content that is entertaining, educational, and conversational. She talks about the ins and outs of different types of relationships, whether you're single, divorced, widowed, or in a relationship. She touches on topics that will affect you. She'll even talk about the things that are taboo. And so with this, she goes deep, breaking down stereotypes and getting conversations, uh, getting conversations going about relevant subjects that we don't tend to want to talk about. So it's, it's all real. Uh, it's straight to the point. She's a perfect person to discuss the hard lessons. So, uh, Welcome to the show, Timna. Are we ready to do this or what? Timna, I heard you rattling around out there. You're, I know you're somewhere there. Uh, you can't hear me? Can you hear I me? I can hear you now. I can oh hear you now. Oh, my goodness. You can hear me. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey. Hi. That, that's how I like to start things off. Hey, hey, hey. And I'm just Timna. I, I try not to use any last names because we don't know if the last name stays changed. You never know, so we're just okay, saying Timna. Okay, this is true, you know. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> we just say Timna. Okay. As a woman, you never know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. All right, just Timna, people. Just Timna. That's all you need to know. <laughs> just all they need to know. It's easy to find. Yeah. Let life live. There we go. And, you know, yes, oh. thank you for inviting me this evening. I appreciate it. No problem. How have you been doing lately? What have you been up to, Timna? Because I know, you know, we've done shows before and we've spoken and you've been in different time zones and, you know, uh, uh, continent and, and still made things happen. And um, yes. it's been a while, but you're here now. What have you been up to? What's new? Well, right now I just finished writing a book called What the Fuck? The Naked Truth of My 20-Year Bipolar Relationship. And um, wow. that's just right now in the editing room. It's complete. It's finished. But I just needed a few few more readers and just editing before I actually put it out for sale. But it's it's going to be ready pretty soon. Yes, WDF. You know, it's, it's a, I, my hashtag, the naked truth. <laughs> that, that sounds powerful. <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, it sounds like there's going to be a few hard lessons in there. Oh my goodness! Um, I, I believe so. I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> and and for those that 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 you know still may you know if this is the first time they're hearing about Timna, just give them a little about you know who you are and what you do. Okay. Well, um, as y'all guys know, single name Timna. What I do is I'm a relationship coach. Sometimes I call myself the consultant because I just really get in down and dirty with the truth about yourself and help you Mm -hmm. answer the question, who am I, what do I want, and how do I get there? And um, and that can be in your relationship, has your relationship within your, with your significant other or at work, because we have relationships with everyone, and sometimes we're the the cause of a lot of drama. So we got to get down to the naked truth. 
So I really, I really like to get, um, you know, understand that about people. The other thing I do is my podcast that I do on Sunday nights. This is Sunday night at nine o'clock, called The Naked Truth um, or Timna Live, which is, you know, my name, of course. And I do a blog, and I'm just, you know, a mom with two kids, ten and nine. I mean, eight. Well, they're turning their na- their ages next month, so uh, it'll be eleven and nine. Two girls. That is mm-hmm. that keep me up and about going and you know doing my thing. So that's there me. There you go. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. So all this experience, all 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 the good and the bad and the sweet and the sour has brought you to the point where you are today. Right? You know, and likewise for myself. So I know that there's hard lessons out there that people they don't want to listen to. And, you know, uh, we were talking about it in the first hour of the show that it's not because people necessarily want to be ignorant. There's a lot of conditioning out there. Uh, People just haven't been prepared for it. But um, I want to go through these one by one and and get your feedback on on each one. And the first hard lesson that folks don't want to listen to on love is um, understanding the difference. I know it sounds corny. Loving a person and being in love. And mm. how to realize that and come to terms with it yourself, right? So to have that conversation with the other person and then for you to also admit it to yourself that, you know what, yeah, I do love them, but I'm not in love with them and still have some kind of relationship, you know. Um, I think that's a WDF. If it ever hits you, if you ever go through that, that is a yeah. WDF moment. <laughs> and, <laughs> a, you know what, about I, that it's, it's really... It's really funny when mm-hmm. I when I think about what you just said in regards to being in love and actually loving that person. When we look at age category, if you're over mm-hmm. 40, you mm-hmm. may not fall in love with somebody again. You may be mm-hmm. I, you know, I love this person because after a certain age is more companionship rather than Google love when yes. we were not 20. So, yeah. you know, is, it, is this a real reality? Yes, it's a real reality if you are divorced, if you have never been um, in, a, in a long-term relationship and you're, ask, you're over the age of 40. It's going to be hard for you to say, man, oh, I'm Google in love with this person. <laughs> you know, I mean, that is, to me is, it happens, yes. It may happen like 1%. Great. But if we look at the overall population is, can I get along with this person? Can we live together? Do we, can, we, can, we make, can we have sex? You know, can we do the things that is going to cause intimacy? I may not googly be in love with this person, but I love this person because I know this person is here to protect me, secure, mm-hmm. make me feel secure, make me feel like I have joy and fulfillment, and also understand me as a human being and as a person and love my – and understand – Maybe love, not not love, my faults, my good and my bad. So at the end of the day, mm. what is love after 40? Right. And, 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 you know, what's interesting is that regardless of, 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 of anybody, you know, whatever relationship they have, that in love feeling, as we were talking about in the first hour of the show, this is chemical. This is chemical. And those chem- that chemical rush dies down. So at the end of it, you're left with, do I want to be with this person? And then it becomes a choice. And if you're going to want to be with them, then it's all right. Am I going to put in the required work to make this happen and keep this happening every week, every day, every hour? Um, you know, so you're going to have to love them. Being in love, yeah, you may see it in love. It may come and go. It comes and goes. <laughs> it comes and but do I like him? Not... It's, I, think, I think the word for do me I is Do I like, like him? Do I like yes. this person? Because I don't have to love this person, but I have to like this person. Am I, you know, I tell people like this. If you're laying mm-hmm. in the bed and you're saying, oh, I don't even, uh, I don't like your smell. <laughs> That's deep. That's deep. When you stop liking a person's smell, that means something is wrong. Because now you're mm-hmm. annoyed by them. You're annoyed by their existence. You're annoyed by their touch. You're annoyed by their being. So that means you don't like that person, or, you know, and you don't like the way that person makes you feel. Now, that's a problem. So is that, the, that yeah. I would say that's the naked truth when it pertains to love. 
Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. And, um, <laughs> and, 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 that's, and that's a hard lesson because knowing how do I negotiate that? What do I do? You know, there are solutions in terms of, like, being honest with your, with your own truth about that yeah. and knowing what yeah. you have to do. Um, but that, that's, that, that's, a, that's a tough one. Um, mm-hmm. I know we talked about hard, hard, hard work. And uh, the second one I wanted to bring up, yes, everyone knows relationships take hard work and commitment. We know this. Mm-hmm. But it's like your career. If you're going to be in a job, you know that you took that job because they promised you X amount of money, X amount of benefits, promotions, um, X amount of holidays a year. So you took it because it lined up with your trajectory, what you imagine mm-hmm. for yourself. Yes, I want to be here in 20 years. The job is telling me it's taking me where I want to go in 20 years. We go together. That's fine. And within that job, as, um, as you do that job for, that, for, the, for those projected 20 years, yeah, you know, you do the courses, uh, take the lessons, uh, um, you know, deal with the promotions, the work, the late nights, the on-call, whatever that job needs, you do it because you realize there's a value. This job is helping me to get to where I want to go. Relationships are no different in that type of work and commitment. It's just like your career. If you don't put energy into it, it's going to fade. The love or the relationship will fade away. Tell me about that, Tina. Well, um, I just listened to you very, you know, very carefully, and um, I would say a relationship is like a job. I would agree with you on that. But at the same time, mm-hmm. sometimes we need training and development on that job, and sometimes mm-hmm. uh, that the which is the relationship. If the relationship is failing, or you're you're disliking the smell, you're disliking the environment, you feel like the benefits are not there, or the job itself, or the relationship itself is not giving you the things that you need or want. That's when you have training and development, which is counseling. So you go in or find a coach. You go in to have a counselor to create a new environment for you and your partner. Now, if you and your partner go through that and it's still not working well for you. Then that's, and then that's when the problem is happening there. And that's when you may need to retire <laughs> in many respects. Retire. Respect. <laughs> you know, <What>? in, many res- <laughs> in many respects. Uh, I mean, why is it that a lot of people, I mean, there's, is there, I think there's, like, never been a time in, in the history of the world where there's been more counselors available, whether – you know, it's licensed counselors, unlicensed, informal, family, elders. Counselors are everywhere for a lot of folks, but a lot of folks don't want to do counseling for their relationships. Why is that? Why? Because we're afraid, especially in our community. People think counseling is the death of our our relationship. You know, oh, my God, if we go to counseling, we are going to surely have a divorce. You know, or, <laughs> or, or something, everybody's going to see something is wrong. You know, I mean, right, at the end of the day, right. that is the lie that we tell ourselves in our community, that counseling is the devil. Uh, no, counseling is God. Ooh. I mean, <laughs> counseling allows you to see your truth. It allows you to look into the mirror because there is an objective person listening to you. But let me tell you, not all counselors, not all coaches are created equal. So don't allow True. one. If you go to one and you don't like that one, you find another one. I say three is the magic number. You kind of just check to see which one is best, and you ask you and your partner, you talk about what you're looking for in a counselor, especially if you know that you want to work on this relationship. I'm a lover of relationships. I'm a lover of love. I'm just a lover of healthy relationships. So it's important that you Mm -hmm. guys understand what makes sense for you. And then when you go to counseling, then you say, okay, damn, is this what I'm hearing here? This is what's going on? All right. Okay, let me get my get on my tool belt and let me get it on and pop and let me do what I need to do and um get this get this done, get this fixed. Because we can't just go in counseling and think that everything's going to be okay. We got to put our tool belt right. on and come in and fix that house. We got to fix that home together to make it sustainable and make it last for years to come. Now, if you if you if you feel at that time counseling is not working, then you realize, like I said, retirement. But again, I'm a lover of love, so I want you to fix that. I want you to have the two belt on, and work towards it. You know, yeah. it, it, it's like you said. You know, um, if it's like a job, there's going to be training, 
And okay. there's not everything in the job you're expected to know. You know, just like nobody gave you a rule book on how to be 30 when you turn 30, but, you know, there's, so there's things to learn. There's going to be things to learn. And, um, and you're right, it shouldn't be filled with so much stigma. I think um, back in the day, um, you know, if we were ever in situations where we had extended family, it may have been easier because you may have had plenty of role models around you to look at. But these days, you know, we kind of live isolated. So your best bet is to go to, you know, a counsellor. But um, there's, there's absolutely no shame in it. Um, nobody's born with yeah. a handbook, you know. No. But, um, <laughs> no one is born uh, with a handbook. A... Huh? I said no one is born with a handbook, but we need to open up one. We need to open one, yeah. one and look at it. Yes, we do. It's uh, important. Absolutely. And, I... and, and, the, and the handbook is called WDF, right? <laughs> called hello, WDF. hello. When you when y'all when my book is out, you better pick it up. The naked truth don't get twisted. It is a true handbook of twenty years of a relationship, the ups and downs, the roller coasters, as I call it, bipolar, which means it's the roller coasters of highs and lows. That's right. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so um, this one's a real. Um, it's what it's what I mean. None of them are pretty. None of them are pretty. Um, it's not necessary that the person you love is best suited for you to spend the rest of your life with. Mm-hmm. Everybody should be able to relate to that, at, you know, in at least some way that you've got someone that you love. But for some reason, there's, there may be a toxic element. There may be a social or economic element, element why you, can, well, you cannot or should not be together. doesn't mean you don't stop loving that person, but something along there doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Tell us about that. Um, you know, when you're on a road and you have those bumps in the road, um, mm-hmm. it's really important to understand what will happen if your tire blows out. What, mm-hmm. who is taking the, who will take the next, who, who's going to go ahead and fix that tire? Who's going to watch the tire to sit there and rubble up and expect somebody else to help? You need to understand what your role is in your relationship. And when we mm-hmm. get onto these bumps, we need to know, okay, I'm really good at this, she's really good at that, he's really good at this, and understand what the person's role is. So when the bump comes along, you can look at each other and understand where we need to, how we need to fix that tire to continue on this road. You know, yeah. so, and I think that, to me, that's one of the, the, the key problems within relationships. Many people don't understand their role. They don't understand their role within the relationship. So they get in the relationship expecting the role to be already assigned. That's not true. Sometimes mm. we need to talk about it. We need to understand our role before we decide to get into a, you know, a long-term relationship. And when we're in the long-term relationship, guess what? Sometimes that role changes, especially when we yeah. add kids. We add different types of jobs. We, add, we may lose a job. We may lose a parent. Whatever the case may be. Things come into the road to cause a little bit of a bump that may change your role and maybe at one point one person was fixing the tire and now you have to fix the tire. And it's important to understand what your role is. So when it happens, you're ready and available to get it in and get down and dirty to fix it so you all can continue moving, if you get what I mean. And- yeah, and, and, and that actually uh, follows in, into uh, one of the other truths, understanding the balance of masculine and feminine energy. And, and you know, I know some people are like, uh, you know, that again. But, you know, if you don't understand your role and know how to project it, then the other, then the other person won't know where to fit in. You know, and so you need to define that. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. It's got to be, um, it's, it's essential uh, to know how you guys are going to fit together and to be prepared for the dynamic because, you know, if people want an equal relationship, <laughs> if they want an equal relationship, then they should, the only equal relationship is one that's dead, is when, when they're both <laughs> dead. Because yeah, you're I, not going to get more equal than that. <laughs> I, I don't agree. I don't you know? agree with the equal of relationship as well because I think we all have a, a particular talent. We have talents in our mm. relationship. One person, mm. the guy may come in and be an excellent cook, excellent cleaner. You can't allow your mother have, for the woman. She's and she's not. She knows she's not. She came in a relationship not cooking and not cleaning. 
And then the mother, mm. the mother-in-law comes in and says, well, why is he cooking and cleaning? And then you go, oh, my God, maybe I should be doing this. And now you decide to switch the role, and now you bitching every day. I don't want to cook, and I don't want to clean. And now the relationship <laughs> is all messed up. When you already knew yeah. that was not your role in the, in the jump start. So sometimes we allow people to come into our world and change our roles as well, or we allow society to define our roles when we get into the home. Right. But at, you see? So at the end of the day, you as a couple should have a clear understanding, whether masculine, feminine, whatever you want to buy, whatever. I don't care what you are, you know, in your role. Your job is to understand what is my what is what are the benefits? What are the things I'm bringing in to this this relationship? What is my resume? And stay by your resume because you know what you're good at, and appreciate what the Absolutely. other person is good at. Appreciate and also appreciate what they're not good at, and don't expect them to be good at something that you know already that you're good at. <laughs> if you understand what I'm saying, because you be like, you're, you're the one, you're the one that's bringing that to the relationship. So why do I need yeah. to do it? You're you already yeah. that. <laughs> I so feel you. I so, totally feel you. Sometimes people forget oh. that because they they allow society to create their roles when the role yeah. has already been created when they were dating. You know, yeah, I, it, it baffles me. You're right. It really does. It baffles me. And then also on top of that, I would like to add that, that let's say there's mm-hmm. one special thing that you really would love for your 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 significant other to do. Now, if they mm-hmm. know that you love this, they should want to do it for you because they know yes. that's going to bring – that's going to make you hot and bother you. That makes me feel so good. You know, when you do right. it, you know, mm-hmm. don't fight it. Don't fight it because somebody else told you it's <laughs> right or wrong. Who cares about them? They're not the it's, one letting get, getting, getting your, your, your partner hot and ready. <laughs> it's true. You know, it's true. It, it, it's so true. And, again, see – and 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 this goes into the again the whole thing of like you know you need to define this and if you can define these things for yourself knowing what you like if you don't know what you like how can you tell somebody I mean, say, yeah okay your partner may instinctively know but even if they don't know if you tell them they may be like oh my goodness I'd love to do that to you <laughs> you know mm-hmm, regardless mm-hmm. of how you know again it's between you two and I know you know if we hear about someone else's stuff it sounds like ew how the, how the hell but you know what? It, 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 it's things like that that will keep you two together. These are things yeah. that you share. So if anything, the more unique the things are between you two, then the more value, the more value you have. Because, you know, I can't get this anywhere else, or I just can't yeah. get it like that. So um, yeah. absolutely, get, get, get your freak on. No, communicate your No, 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 no. <laughs> Understand your freak. Communicate your freak, and then get your freak. <laughs> Hey, hey, because a a lot of times, you know what, a lot of times people people miss that part of the relationship. You know, they they come in the relationship, a lot of people, for one, lie about who they truly are. And Mm -hmm. as time, time, uh, you know, goes, people start settling settling in to who they are and and start unraveling Mm -hmm. and revealing themselves. And as the reveal, you know, comes on, if people become either liking it or disliking it. Uh, because, mm. as you know, as time goes on, people become more and more relaxed. You're going to take that suit off. First you take off the tie. Then you, then you take off the jacket. Then you take off the shirt. So you're getting down to your naked truth. So, you mm-hmm. know, and, and, and sometimes, you know, people, I wish people could get to their naked truth faster so they know what they're working with. It, it, yeah. It's really a shame yeah. that we don't get there quicker than 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 just trying to get into the relationship two and three years down the line. Then you know who that person is. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, and mm-hmm. you know that that kind of tracks into um, well, there's a couple of there's a couple of relationship and love truths that that uh, ties into. One of them is that you're not future proof. You're not future proof simply because. You never communicated, whether you didn't want to or you weren't able to, you, you never communicated um, who you were. Mm-hmm. So as the relationship developed, the things that you did because, well, I was trying to please him or I was trying to please her, and it worked for a while, but now I realize 
that there's something that I want to do that pleases me. And then your partner's looking at you like, what the hell is this? I just start doing this. <laughs> you know? And, and right there, now you've got a problem. You've got to stop me from being me, blah, 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 blah. And you, and you start going back and forth. You know, mm-hmm. but if you were able to define yourself from the beginning, you future-proof the relationship for any stuff like this. Like you said, if your resume is there, you know, um, I'm not saying that everyone needs to have a crystal ball and know the exact future, but you kind of lay the, tra- at least you know the trajectory. Yeah, this is me, this is what I'm about, and this is what I want to do in my life for the next 20 years. What about you? Yeah, I want this, that. And if, and if you see some kind of synchronicity, then okay. We know that at least, but at least for the next 20 years, we have a value for each other. That's, that, that's good, We're considering a long relationship is like two years, you know, right about now. So, um, so the, the future-proofing, um, like what you said, you know, having that talk at the beginning, it, without, without it, your relationship, you're, you're running blind. You're going to get to that point where, like you said, you know, when I met him, he, he, he had a tie on, he had, a, he had a, you know, his suit. <laughs> Waistcoat, mm-hmm. you know, the wingtip mm-hmm. shoes and everything. Mm-hmm. But now, I just see him in his boxers and his guts hanging out. I realized the suit was hiding all this truth. This dude, mm-hmm. this dude is out of shape. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> his, his nature came out, and he was like, and she didn't really like it. She didn't like it because she was like, yeah. okay, now you know, now I don't like what I see. But uh, so it's it's kind of like you know what? I'm not gonna lie. I hate seeing the guy in the club with the suit on. Because you know definitely that ain't you. You know right. definitely that ain't you. That is a straight up lie. Cause, you know, because the, the person that really is in his suit, he's going to be there maybe like at 6 o'clock and be bouncing because he married. <laughs> but not. You know what I mean? And the guy that comes in at 9 o'clock with his suit on, you know he went home and took a shower and put that suit on. So, you know... <laughs> You're right. You're well, right. It's a, it's a costume. It's, it's, it's a costume. It's a true. It's a costume. Mm-hmm. So if 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 we can sift through the costume, sift through all the makeup from women, we sift through all this stuff and understand who they are naked. We wouldn't have to have a lot of this stuff. These hard lessons. We wouldn't have to have them because we have already appreciated what we find, what we see in front of us. You know. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, I say take. Take somebody's camping, and you'll know who they are. <laughs> yeah, nah, for real. <laughs> you know, I, I, absolutely, absolutely. You know, okay, so take this, right? So you got this truth, right? Mm. You tend to love your friends more than you love your significant other because you and your friends actually have real chemistry. The amount of times when, you know, you bonded with your friends, and it's not, and it's not really anything to do with time. There's some people you just bond with and you have a relationship because, like you said earlier on, there's a companionship. You're into the same kind of stuff. You communicate a certain way as opposed to relationships where we try to get ourselves in situations with people, you know, and we may not necessarily have the chemistry. At the end of the day, uh, we were saying that earlier, we can have arguments with our, with our friends, we can cuss them out, but, you know, we'll, we'll bounce back, we'll stick with them. But relationships, uh, you'd be lucky. You'd be lucky if you can if you can survive a few arguments these days without really thinking, oh my God, this is a crisis. You know, we have mm-hmm. better chemistry with our friends, and a lot of times it seems your guy knows this or your woman knows this because he's like, why are you always hanging out with her? Why are you always hanging out with them? You know, and um, it's because there's real chemistry. And I just think it's sad that a lot of couples they're not actually friends. They're not mm-hmm. friends, and um, and I think it's okay if you understand that. But you just have to accept that. Yeah, yeah, me and my husband ain't friends. I, I love him, but we're not friends. How, how does one live with that truth? You know? If you know that my husband is not my friend. I don't like him like that, but I do love him, and we get on, and he's cool, and this and that, but we're not friends. What do you do when, when that realization hits? Well, well, you know what? She, she's lying to herself, okay, um, that I love him and all that stuff, but we're not friends. Um, I think you have to be friends with your partner. I don't care what anybody has to say. Mm-hmm. Um, a friendship mm-hmm. has to has to be there because friendship mm-hmm. is trust. At the end of the right. day, friendship equals trust. So if you don't have a friendship with your partner, you don't trust your partner. You don't have a commonality, so you don't have you, so you don't have int, an intimate place in their heart, or they don't have an intimate place in your heart. So um, so number one, 
is going to is going to is going to end in some kind of way um whether now or later the relationship will die and that is a telltale sign to me when you're not friends right so right, so when right. somebody makes that statement they are at the edge of a, to, towards a divorce but they're holding on um, for alternative motives whether it be money whether it be status whether it be children whether it be family religion Whatever it is, they're holding on for alternative motives because they cannot let their hair down with their significant other. I don't care what you got to say. If that person is not your friend, that person is not your life partner. It's not. Okay. All right. Good point. And there's actually research to to back this up, um, you know, about couples who actually identified their partner as their best friend stayed together way longer and were way happier than couples that couldn't admit that they were with their friend. Um, so that, 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 that's real. That's real to the bone. Yeah, bug. because you got to um, understand there's a lot of lies. There's a lot of lies happening when you can't speak to your partner about friendly things or friendly matters. You start lying. So if, you're, if, you're, if, you, if, you, if you hang out with your friends and you tell your friends, your truth about your job or how you feel or, you know, what, what, you're, what you like, and you can't come home and talk to your partner about that? That's a huge problem. That's, you're yeah, right. You're, you're right. Yeah. 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 Relationship mm-hmm. is, 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 is there, there. There is no relationship. You're not related. No. You're not related. No, you're not related. I like that. You're not related if you don't have a friendship. You're not. So yeah. if anyone listening and you're not friends with your partner, that's a problem. Start building a friendship. Really? Start creating a friendship with your partner today. Today. What up? Get you to know each everybody. other. Yep. It's true. It's so true. So, okay. So you got the friendship. Um, you know, um, you know, I like I like him because he's my friend and I love her because she's my friend and a couple say this kind of stuff and it's like, you know, well, we don't care about money, I don't really care about his looks. But that's one of my truths. Money, looks, social background, it matters. I'm not, now, it may not matter as much as people think it does, but it does matter. You know, just having an awareness even of, okay, how much money do we have? Where are we at? You know, just to know we've got enough to support ourselves. Or the looks, um, you know, I've known people that, I mean, come on. You want someone that's going to be pretty? You, you don't want that. You can't tell me, like, you know what, he looked like the back of my fridge, but I love him. Rubbish. I am not accepting that. And then social background. We're talking about connecting with their family, feeling that you can go to their mother or to their father and have a conversation about them. If there's a problem, trust in them. Having trust in their family to know that there's no backbiting or whatnot, that you can connect and understand where they're, if you understand where they're coming from, you understand where your partner's coming from. So, um... So tell me about, about money and looks, Tim. What do you feel about that? Money, looks, and social background. I think, it, i tell you right now, if you're a shallow mm-hmm. person, you're going to look mm-hmm. for money, looks, and social background immediately. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, mm-hmm. that, that is, that's your card. And that's fine. That's your card. That's who you are. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and if you don't want to cover it, you're not covering it. Now, mm-hmm. a, a person that has or have been through some type of pain or some type of... Uh, or already has money, or have been through some type of trauma, they may say, you know what, I don't really care about any of that stuff. I just want this person to truly love me, truly love who I am. And when they find that person, that person might be fat or maybe unappealing to the look of others, but that person is giving them their core desires or their core value, then yes, if they do say to somebody, you know what, I love this person for who they are. They may be really right because that person is giving them what they desire and what they need. And when they go to bed at night, they like the way that person smells. You know what I mean? And Where has No, I believe in this. Now, now, mm-hmm. now I'm I'm going to I'm going to say right now. Money is important. I'm sorry, it is. Money is important. Value system is important. Cultural dynamics is important. All those things mm. are important. But what level of importance is it for you and your value right. system 
and your mm. core values. So, you know, at the end of the day, we have to understand what is our top priority. My top priority right. might be different from yours because if mm. I'm already coming into a status or if I don't have status and I don't care about status, whatever the case may be, you got to know where your lane is. You got to understand who you are first. Agree. Mm -hmm. Then you can start looking at the world. You can start looking at who you want. Because I can't tell homegirl over there or homeboy over here, you know, what they should have or what they shouldn't have. That's not my. That's not my point. My my understanding is to my girlfriends. Hey, what is your priority? Is this what you really want? And if they say, you know what, yes, Timna, I don't care if he's fat and bald, but if he got and if he got money in his pocket, I'm happy. You know what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna say, okay, go, girl. Another girl would say, man, as long as he's tall and handsome and he got, he just came out of jail, I don't care because he looks good. He's eye candy. He's eye candy and he's a, he's a thug for life. He a thug for life and, he, and he's right. slinging it and he's slinging it and slinging it. I can't say nothing about her because she like that. But you know what I'm going to have a problem with? When a year or two come down the line and then that girl who said she liked that thug and that thug can't go out with her, and he and he has a he has a vocabulary problem, but he still he looks good, and she's now mad at him for being a thug. Now I got a problem with you because you knew what you got this with, is when you got true. with him. This is okay? true. Okay. And is I'm gonna true. have a problem with that other girl that says, "Man, you know he has all this money, but he's always gone, and I'm alone." Yeah, you are alone because he has a job that travels. So yeah, I don't know. We gotta understand what we have. No, you're 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 absolutely right. You're, you're absolutely right, and um, and I think all all you can get is you know if I guess if if money, like you said, the level of importance, and if, and mm-hmm. to have somebody who can synchronize, then the same have the same value of importance as you do, you know, then 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 you may have a chance because you know if he's away all the time making his money because he loves money and you don't mind him being away, then you're not going to complain. No. But if you know that's not really you and your value is I actually really want him here, then you're going to have a problem, absolutely. So mm-hmm. um, you've got to understand your priorities and be able to communicate them and then have that conversation sooner rather than later. Otherwise, like you said, yeah, you'd be knocking on Tinder's door. Help me. Tell me, Tinder. Yeah. He doesn't call me. <laughs> and then I'm going to say, you know? so what, what, what happened? And I'm going to give you a naked truth, and I'm going to say, listen, you married a thug. Okay, that's it. I don't even know why you're trying to dress him up and be a huxtable because he's not. Right, right, right. He's not. He's not. <laughs> it's okay, though. But you know what? For me, I'm not judging you because it's okay. You And you need to stop judging yourself because that's what you're in love with and be happy with that. Don't let other mm. people come in to your world and say that he's not good enough. You know what? He's good enough for you because that's who you wanted to be with. And be proud of it. And when you start becoming proud of who you're you're with, guess what? Everybody else around you will line up. But as soon as they see that insecurity and see you fluffing, oh, oh yeah, stuck. straight up, they're gonna dig in and rip you apart. Yeah, no, one hundred. You're right. <laughs> you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. They say they say it's like it's like dogs and blood. When they smell that blood, <laughs> That's they're gonna come it. trying to tear that apart. They're gonna th- that's Absolutely right. So you right. you have to you have to own your stuff. Whether rich, poor, white, black, I don't care, short, fat, I don't care. You gotta own it like it's golden. And when you own mm-hmm. it like it's golden, nobody can come in it. Nobody. Yeah. You're right. Okay. Tim, we're gonna, we're getting back to sex. Um mechanical sex. It's going to happen like anything you know whether you go you know when you first went to the gym when you were 16 you were so excited and it's like oh my god the gym there's weight and whatever else you find in the gym it was all there and you were like a kid in a candy store but at some point it becomes eh, it's the gym whatever you know it's cool i'm gonna do it and the excitement leaves you it becomes mechanical of course there's little things you can do change your change your exercise routine you start going in the afternoon instead of at night or whatever and create a little level of excitement. Um, but ultimately, you'll have to do that to stop it from becoming mechanical. And no matter how great, how many fireworks and mermaids and whatever happens during, during your sex, 
it's going to become mechanical unless you do something about it. Tell us about this truth, because people need to think, you know, the sex is going to last and be great forever. What's the deal? Look, listen here. The sex becomes <laughs> mechanical, of course. But at the end of the day, we all need to always spice things up. When it starts becoming a job, <clears throat> you got to look at that, as we said, training and development. Sometimes you need to go to the strip club. Sometimes you need to watch a porn flick to find out what other things I can do. Sometimes you need to take a pole dancing class, ladies. I mean, there's certain things that you got to do. Some guys, y'all need to do push-ups in the morning, get that chest looking right, you know, get them legs looking right, go to the gym. You don't even have to go to the gym. You just do 100 push-ups in the morning. Not, you know, you take your time first. You start with 10, 20. You know, you build yourself up. You start seeing how your chest start looking nice, and your your lady just want to get on top and, and feel good about it. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, we all need to give ourselves education when it pertains to intimacy and sex. We need to give ourselves staycations. We need to have, you know, look at it to change the mechanical portion of it. Because, yes, with any engine, we, it runs, runs, runs until it breaks down. So what yep. we need to do, we need to put fresh oil in it. We need to have an oil change. We need to take it to the mechanic for a tune-up. We all know that. Why are we not doing that in the bedroom? Why are we not bringing more different toys, different situations? Look at things. Maybe you need to change it up. Maybe before, before you had a baby, you know, it was great having sex one way. Now your VJ is all funky. Now you got to have it in a different way. Okay, <laughs> fine. Fine. Then do it, do it a different way. <laughs> you know? It is real. I mean, it's, it real. it's real. You know? And, or the guy, he may, he may was able to be had stamina at one point. And then, you know, his stamina just weakened down. Go take a pill. All right? Sometimes your woman needs you to take a pill. Well, that's okay. That's okay. But, you know, that's okay. But let her know that you're doing it cause she, so she don't feel like, you know, this is going to be all the time. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's, it's a special occasion. It's a, it's a special Ooh. occasion, you know, a little ride right there. I just let you know. <laughs> it's a special you know, so you know, but you, you shouldn't be ashamed about these things because this is the natural progression of life. You know, men lose their libido. You know, women lo- lose the elasticity of their vagina. Things happen with people, and it's okay to talk about it. Okay, I think a lot of people they they're they're afraid to say, you know what? It's not working. It's not doing what it needs to do. Whether, you know, the, the sex is not going the way it needs to do. We're not intimate. Right now it's becoming more mechanic. Talk about it. But, but and, and so what, your, your feeling may be hurt. Yeah, it may be hurt. But you've got to understand at least the person's communicating with you and not going to have an affair. Okay? That's what you need to understand. Mm. We always have to look at the good side of it. Thank God my man or my woman is coming to me saying, you know what, baby, that 10-minute sex is not helping me out anymore. You know, I need I need you to be in 20 or 30 or an hour. Can you take a pill real quick? You shouldn't be mm. offended by that. You shouldn't be offended shouldn't. by that. But no. you know what? That's where that's where the friendship comes in. You know, <laughs> that's where the friend to be able to talk like that. And and, and and it's interesting. You know, again, another 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 reality check for love. True mm-hmm. love. If it, if it, you get some bullshit love. And then you get you can get better love, and you can get love that is you know some true essence, and love that is of the highest essence. It's going to be the most inconvenient kind because it's, it's the love that's actually there to help you grow, which means there's going to be change, which means there's going to be reality checks, there's going to be truth, there's going to be a lesson held, uh, sorry, a, a mirror held up to you for you to see things about yourself that hey, you know, you can change this and actually be better. You know, and, and learn those lessons. Our partners are supposed to play those roles for us. That, you know, every guy wants to be He-Man. Every dude wants to be a He-Man in the bedroom. So if your woman tells you, you know what, brethren, you know, you need, to, you need to increase your reps. You know, you need to start doing reps. You know, I need to start changing what goes in your stomach because I don't, this is getting in the way. You know, it's a hard truth, but who else is going to tell you but someone that cares for you? And that's love. And that love, it can make you better at sex and it can add years to your life and increase the quality of your life. Because somebody, you know, as, as, as opposed to like other people, like, ah, oh, you're fine. Ah, oh, your gut's okay. 
Oh, she's too, she's too superficial. Nah. You yeah, and then she's talking to her can't. friends and talking about you behind your back. Or, you know, or looking right. at the guy at work saying, mm, baby, I think you're fine. You know, I mean, it, it, it happens. I'd rather you tell me the truth. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's, 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 and like you said, the, the better, the better the love is between you two, the more truth is going to be. Just like, look how we are with our friends. We tell them the truth all the time. <laughs> we tell them the truth. And you may not care if it, if it, if it bothers them or whatnot, because you know there's a bond that's stronger. In fact, there's, there's the trust. You know, whatever they're doing, they're not trying to hurt you. They're not trying to mess with your world. It's coming from a place of care. And I think that with a lot of couples, when they say truthful things to each other, they get offended and it's like, oh, man, you're trying to do this to me. You're trying to hurt me. That insecurity comes out. And that's crazy. That, that you cannot last in a relationship like that. You have to let, let your guard down and be comfortable. I mean, this, this is someone you're sharing your bed with. This is your home. Where else are you supposed to let your guard down if not in your home, in your bed with the person you're lying next to? And I, I, a lot, it's, it's, it's amazing how many people cannot open up to their partners. And, um, and that's a hard truth right there. If you don't have love there because you can't open up, maybe you should be thinking about how to change that or, or change the situation, period. But um, love, 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 love is harsh for, if for, good, for good reason. Um, but one more, one, one, one more, one more truth. One more, one, one more truth. Um, which, okay, you pick one. You pick one, Tim. It's, got, it's either going to be admit it. We all have expectations of our mates. Because everyone likes to say, I don't have any expectations. Or you shouldn't have expectations. Bullshit. You're always going to have an expectation. Even if it's you expect, I expect you to respect me. I expect you to talk to me. That's an expectation. And that is not an unfair one to have. So is, you can talk about that or talk about at some point, you're going to want someone else in your relationship. It's going to happen. You're going to want someone else. How are you prepared to deal with that? Which one you want to go? Um, hmm. Ooh, you're going to want someone else in your relationship. You have to be prepared for that. Okay. Mm. Okay. That's a, that's, that's. With? That's a <laughs> I like it. Now, with that one, you, you, you kind of touched on it because um, the relationship, it becomes mechanical. It becomes a habit. You know, the freaky sex from the first three, four months or maybe the first year doesn't happen so much right now. And it just feels like, yeah, you know, we get up, we eat dinner, we go to bed, we wake up, look after the kids. And it's a habit. And then someone comes along and gives you that little buzz. And, um, and you can look at someone else and maybe even consider it. But if your relationship feels like a habit, there's good habits and there's bad habits. And I'd like to think that people find themselves in relationships that are good habits that are worth staying there. And that's, and that's what you think about when you see someone else and you're thinking, hmm, they look fine, but you know what? I've got something good at home. So is that a situation that you can relate to? And, or have you known someone in that situation? And if so, how do you deal with that when that moment hits you, when you really start thinking about, hmm, hmm. Hold on, mind some of that. He won't find out. She won't find out. What do you do tonight? You know what's so funny? Mm-hmm. Um, been there, done that, of course. And I know a lot of people that have had this situation. And people, I feel, is blinded. Not even blinded. They're ignorant, which ignorance is they don't want to know. They don't want to know that their partner may feel the need to be with someone else. And because they feel like, oh, she's not going anywhere, he's not going anywhere. Nobody wants him, nobody wants her. Um, and Or she or he is so loyal to me that nothing will happen. But really and truly, if y'all are not communicating at home, if you guys are not intimate and your, intimate, your hit, intimacy is a job, meaning it's mechanic, you should have it in your mind. There is a percentage. If that person is going out to work, that they could meet someone else, or even in the house, they could meet someone else if you are not satisfying their need. There is a percentage. So when it does happen, 
the hard lesson is of love, when it does happen and you find out it's, oh, my God, I saw the signs. I should have, could have, would have. Or, man, we should have talked about this. Or, man, I maybe should have, you know, gave her more attention or given him more attention or whatever the case may be. There is something missing in our relationship that I chose to be ignorant about. I chose to be ignorant about. But there are certain situations where, you know, the other person mess may be plain damn just dog. <laughs> you know, just, you know, someone who just is so insecure that they have to sleep with a lot of people or is insecure in the relationship, not insecure within who they are, but for women, they're insecure in the relationship, meaning that that um, they have fallen out of love or they don't feel secure, they don't feel wanted or needed in their own relationship. So they, they seek that need or that want from someone else. Right. Um, you know, so so they look for that that um, extension of gratification of support from somebody else, and so they do it. It happens. It's there. Mm. You know, that's what what chapter is that in my book? I think chapter six in my book. <laughs> wow, a so, whole chapter. So <laughs> that there is a whole chapter on the the love affair, and um, mm. when people start reading my book, they will understand what happened. And the reasons why I, and I'm, I, you know, it, I'm out there, so it don't matter, why I had an affair. And, mm. um, and the pain behind it, the pain that, caught, that caused it, the pain after the aftermath of it. But again, one person may be sitting there and not believing that this person will go anywhere or do anything because they're so cocky about the whole situation but they never was given support or love or yeah. nothing. So you can't expect you you can't expect your dog not to bite you if you don't take it out for a walk. That's real talk. You know That's what I mean? So, and if you don't feed it, mm. it's going to get aggressive or and or look for a new owner. You see how many dogs and cats run away because their their owner not to get them. Yeah. Yeah. So so I it's important. You. To take care of your, it's important to take care of your loved one at home, so they don't have to go out. And the signs, are, everybody sees the signs. The signs are there, but people choose to be ignorant about it. Wow! So it's a hard lesson learned. Definitely. It is. So final takeaway: What is it that you want people now? You know, uh, we've been talking about hard lessons. You've spoken about chapters in your book. You're talking about your personal. Uh, experiences. What do you want to leave everyone with? You know, when we talk about hard lessons, um, I do want to leave people with trust your intuitions. I think that's the number one thing. And um, if we follow our true desires, our core values, who we are, what we need, what we want, and how, what's the road to get there, how are we going to set up this journey on getting there, um, it will, our hard lessons will be softer. Because we have developed a roadmap, and knowing on that roadmap we're going to have some bumps in the road, but knowing who's, what role is there, what is our position, what is my position, how am I, what's going to happen, and just kind of having a roadmap, and also knowing that there may be some detours in that roadmap, and you may mm-hmm. end up having a breakup. But and if that detour puts you on a breakup. It's okay because the other road is a better road for you to be on, okay? And if you stay on your road and your road is there and the the rainbow is there with the person that you want, that's okay too. But know that that road is a long road and you will continue having some bumps, but be prepared for them. Talk about them. Have that conversation. As I said again, Trust your intuition and show up naked, the naked truth. And sometimes we say, what the fuck, and that's okay. That's okay, but be naked. Understand what that means because naked is beautiful. It's vulnerability, and vulnerability is what? Trust, and trust in yourself, 
trust in your partner, trust in who you are will make you greater and make your relationship greater. That's it. And y'all guys find wow. me on Timna, Timna.com, Timna Live. And tonight at 9 o'clock, I'm talking about the five love languages. So get it in. Get it in. Blog Talk uh, Radio, Timna Live. I'm, you know, I'm getting it in, five love languages. Y'all, you know, I am, I'm playing with these five love languages because we need them. You, you know, we just talked about the, five, the hard lessons. Now we got to get into the languages. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the levels of communication. Love it. All right, Timna. So that's how they can get. So timnalive.com, how else can they get hold of you? Somebody wants to reach out to you. Give us your information. At Order. the end of the day, you know, you can reach out for me um, definitely on my website, timna.com. Timna Live, I do have a website there too, but that is on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Timna Live, and timnalive.com. If you want to hear the show tonight, Definitely click on any of my um, social media stuff. The the link will be there. Click it and get into it. Nine o'clock. That's one hour. So you have time to take a shower, eat something, use the bathroom, whatever you need to do. But okay, that's like you could, you could be driving listening to me. You're good. One hour. Just get on T I M. M is in Mary. N is in Nancy. A. You know L I V E. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We good. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> all right, Tim, now. All right, well, look, you know, at some point, I think you probably got, I, you know, I say that to everyone, but the conversations are great, and it's like we've got so much more to talk about. So at some point uh, in the future, you can come back, and we can continue where we left off, and maybe even cover some of the more spicier details of your book that folks need to get through their heads. How about that? Definitely, definitely. And, you know, next week I am going to read an insert of my book on my show, so I'll be reading the first two chapters out loud so people can just kind of have a feeling of how I write and what's going on and just, um, you know, tease them a little bit. So because um, wow. I'm actually going to do the audio version of my book and because you have to listen oh, wow. to my voice to understand what's going on, right? Wow. <laughs> that's, some, that's some real stuff, man. Yeah, that's some real, real emotion there. But um, yeah. the vulnerability, you, you, you know, like I said, naked truth is the only way to be. And at some point you have to, I hope everybody understands the value of that, you know, as you get older. Naked truth, that's, it's, your prote- it's what protects you. It will actually protect It's not the other way around. When you're vulnerable, it is your protection. Yeah, it you makes know? you stronger. It makes you strong. You it know, does. being naked makes you stronger because then people see, you, 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 I'm here, what you want? What you want? What you, I'm, you got here, what? What? What do you see? You see me? What? 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 I ain't covering nothing. Right. What? You, it, so if somebody has something is. to say, it, it, you, you, you know, the other day somebody had said to me, oh, you messing up your um reputation, you know, doing the way, what reputation? I'm here. What? I'm here. <laughs> there ain't no reputation because there ain't nothing fake about me. I'm naked at all times. So if you can't accept me naked, damn. I don't want you accepting me at all. It's true. It's so true. It is so true. Tim, uh, man, we, 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 it's so much. We've we, we, we got to do this. Uh, but get ready for your show. Everybody, right. 9 p.m., Tim the Live. You, you heard it. And, um, you know, we, we will catch up again, Tim. Now, do not Thank be a stranger, so okay? Thank no you. Problem. Have a good night. We will talk right, soon. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. So, Source Nation. Um, Look, just as life isn't perfect, intimate relationships aren't either. They require effort, compromise. They require two people to practice patience and presence and thoughtfully extend themselves for the sake of the other. This is the naked truth. It's down to us to redefine the fairy tale that we've been fed about love and create our own reality that's about us in the center, naked, exposed, so we can be treated exactly the way we are and not by an image that's not really us. It's time to take a stand and acknowledge the fact that we've all been fed, you know, the, the, the line and the stories and the misconceptions about love. We've been told love is just a feeling, but in reality, it's an action. It's many actions. It's continuous work and something that two people must commit to as a daily ritual. And, you know, when we're ready to accept this new reality and get past the damaging lies about things needing to be perfect all the time, 
then we can make room for the true joy of engaging deeply, honestly, and nakedly in a great relationship, which holds a powerful, flexible space that widens itself to accommodate our struggles, our partner struggles, and all our combined necessary struggles. So, Source Nation, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. But before I leave, let me thank our sponsors one more time. They are Paper to Film Production, Revolutionary Mills, Scott Cares Foundation, Urban Grandstand Digital, Meet My Types Matchmaking, Blend to Blend, Juice Bar Boutique, Ren Ovation, and New Covenant of Praise Worship Center. Also, Source Nation, once again, if you are in the ATL and you are single and you are interested in creating a relationship based on the classic values of respect, communication, honor, you need to come to meet my types. You know, it's funny, Tim just spoke about the resume. What's in your resume? You know, what's your trajectory for the next five years? How do I know we're going to be heading in the same place? We create relationship resumes for you. You guys, if you haven't heard about Meet My Types, you're going to go, you need to go to the website, Meet My Types, M-E-E-T-M-Y-T-Y-P-E-S, because it's all about meeting your type and actually experience how these authentic and real conversations are so different with people that are your type from the regular type of dead conversations you have with other people. We have an 80% success rate when it comes to people actually connecting and going out for second date. It's no joke. So uh, right now, anyone's listening to the show, you can go to the website um, from July 25th, and you will get in for, you will actually reserve your place for half price if you put in the discount code T-E-M. That's my name, Tango Echo Mike. Tem. So just type that in, you get in for half price. So, Nation, um, any questions also? Uh, for, for the show, any ideas, you can hit me up at meet, M-E-E-T, meet at meetmytypes.com. All right, we had a wonderful show. Thank you so much for listening. There'll be more of it next week, bigger and better. You've been listening to Renaissance Relationship Therapy with me, Life Purpose Coach Tempsey. Everyone have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. Love is all and all is love. Peace. Peace.